one of the most entertaining cards we have ever put together at the Golden Boy. Um, obviously, the much anticipated return of Canelo Alvarez uh, in a real fight against the real guy, a big puncher, a hungry guy, Alfredo Angulo, with Leo Santa Cruz and Christian Mijares, Carlos Molina and Jermel Charlo, Jorge Linares and Nihito Arakawa, and of course as well Ricardo Alvarez and Sergio Thompson on the, uh, on the opening bout on Showtime uh, Extreme. I'd like to thank uh, our sponsors for all the work and the activation. Corona Extra, La Cerveza Mas Fina, uh, has really become the brand when it comes to beer in the sport of boxing. Uh, multiple platforms, uh, they're really everywhere, so I thank them very much for activating in, uh, across the nation in all of their retail locations. I'd like to thank AT&T, who has become a staple in Golden Boy uh, events. Uh, I'd like to thank as well Gas Amigos Tequila. Their slogan is brought to you by those who drink it. And I, can't, I can tell you it tastes very good. So uh, great, uh, great uh, tequila. I can only encourage you uh, to go and uh, have a sip. Uh, tickets are still on sale. There are only a few hundred tickets left. So we do anticipate a complete uh, sellout. Uh, the venue scaled a little over 14,000. So we will have a big crowd here on Saturday night at the MGM uh, Grand Garden. Uh, it's going to be broadcasted as well in all the movie theaters, 400 uh, selected movie theaters across the nation. So please let your people know as well that uh, if they cannot be live here at the MGM or watch it uh, live on Showtime uh, pay-per-view, that this fight is available on the big screen as well in uh, over 400 uh, movie theaters, I think in all about 600 screens, through our partnership with uh, Phantom Events. Uh, if you want to see which venues, uh, which movie theaters it is, it's www.fathomevents.com, F-A-T-H-O-M, events.com. Uh, this press conference is currently uh, streamed uh, live through Showtime Sports, uh, press pass live via satellite, showtime.com sports, and uh, YouTube as well, the Showtime YouTube channel, and uh, uh, all the fans of Golden Boy through www.goldenboypromotions.com as well. Before I'm going to be introducing uh, some of the people up here on the da dais, I'd like to acknowledge I uh, have to build the perfect venue for pay-per-view. It would be the MGM. Um, pay-per-view revenues for a pay-per-view show are the single most important revenue stream. There is no other venue which is so conductive to hosting big fights big events like the MGM Grog Garden and of course the MGM Hotel with all the great restaurants on property and uh, you know you got members from the media are being fed here, being treated well, have great rooms and everything so I think uh, I'm speaking on behalf of all of us in this room. A big thank you to the president of MGM Sports and Entertainment, my good friend Richard Sturge. Please Richard. So we know the fans are looking forward to seeing him back in the ring. We'd also like to give a warm Las Vegas welcome to Alfredo Angulo, as he will be making his Las Vegas and MGM Grand debut. As most of you know who have watched Angulo fight, he always brings a lot of energy and punching power into the ring, and we know he will provide the fans with a great fight on Saturday night. We'd also like to give a special thanks to Oscar De La Hoya, Richard Schaefer, and the entire Golden Boy promotion staff, uh, Team Alvarez and Team Angulo, Steven Espinoza of Showtime Sports, and of course the Nevada State Athletic Commission. Uh, once again, thanks for being here and look forward to seeing you Saturday night for this great event. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Richard. And of course, being in Vegas means as well that the fights are under the auspices of the great Nevada State Athletic Commission. Um, I was sad to see uh, my friend Keith Kaiser leave. I think, uh, I think he did a terrific job and uh, I will miss him. Uh, but I know that uh, the search is on to find the proper replacement and uh, the Nevada Athletic Commission is uh, under the guidance now of the chairman of the Nevada State Athletic Commission and I think it's the first time, at least that I can remember, that we actually had the chairman of the Nevada State Athletic Commission at a pre-fight uh, press conference. 
And I think what that shows is it shows the commitment of the commission to the sport of boxing, the importance they give to the sport of boxing, but it shows as well the passion of the chairman. Uh, who I have to say. Thank you, Richard. Over the last year, Showtime and Showtime Pay-Per-View have become the premier destination for big-time boxing. Showtime is giving boxing fans more live boxing, more replays of classic fights, more total hours of boxing program than anyone else in the sport. And we've done it with state-of-the-art technology, like 4K cameras and super slow-mo and social media integration. and and on and on the things that our competitors aren't doing. And the audience and the viewers have responded enthusiastically as our audience share has grown by leaps and bounds. And really, the secret of our success is really simple. It's two things. First, we work with first-class partners. And this event is no exception. MGM must thank them as well. One last reminder, obviously, the pay-per-view starts at 6 p.m. Pacific, 9 p.m. Eastern. We'll be going live on Showtime with our pre-fight show, Countdown Live. That's at 5 p.m. Pacific, 8 p.m. Eastern. We'll see you then. Thank you, uh, Stephen. And, uh, I agree with you. Total, total, total action from top to bottom. As a matter of fact, uh, even with the early fights, uh, that's what we wanted our matchmakers to do, just uh, great entertainment. And so I urge you to be there early, and I know some of you have already told me that this is the kind of card they want to be there early uh, when the doors open. And I'm just going to quickly mention to you some of the fights which will be shown uh, uh, earlier before we go live on the pay-per-view. Uh, the opening uh, the night is Steve Lovett, a 7 and 0 with 5 knockouts of New South Wales. He is uh, going to be fighting in the light heavyweight uh, division. A very exciting fighter, big puncher, so I'm looking forward to seeing him. Then uh, next up is Keandre Gibson, 8 and 0 with 3 KOs of St. Louis, Missouri. Uh, he will be facing Antonio Wong with 11, 7 and 1 of Tijuana, Mexico, and uh, in a 6 round uh, junior welterweight fight. Then, uh, you sure want to, don't want to miss that one, uh, I'm very excited about this fight, I'm very excited about this fighter, uh, the way he fights, the way he handles himself, the personality he has, outside of the ring as well, how he's connecting with fans and with people, and that is Jojo Diaz, the 2012 uh, US Olympian of South El Monte, California, he will face uh, Giovanni Fuentes of Bayamon, Puerto Rico. Now, I just want to I want to make a quick comment here. I was watching last weekend uh, another Olympian fighting uh, for a world title in his uh, supposedly second fight, and it was advertised everywhere as his second fight. I have no problem with that because I do believe it was his second fight. But then what I ask you, members of the media, to let's be consistent. Let's be consistent with that, and what I mean is, Jojo Diaz record, if we want to be consistent and use the same thing we, you guys use for Lomachenko, uh, his record is 8 and 0, and the fights which uh, these young fighters, and I'm not just talking about Lomachenko or Jojo Diaz, I'm talking about all of the fighters which have participated in the World Series of Boxing, that the fights they did in the World Series of Boxing should not count as part of their professional record. And so in my books and in your books, and I think whoever else are the official bookkeepers of these, uh, what is it, fight facts, they should please uh, adjust that and uh, reflect those records properly uh, in Jojo Diaz's case as eight and all. Thank you. That fight here between those two guys might actually be the best fight of all in the entire night. So make sure you're going to be there because this is entertainment at its best. These are two guys which come to fight, a lot of heart, a lot of pride. So you want to be there when they are going to enter the ring. Uh, Thompson has a record of 28 and 3. He uh, won in 14 of his last 15 fights, winning all 14 by knockout, by the way. And uh, so he is, he is ready to go. He's excited to be in this fight. And of course, uh, Ricardo Alvarez from Guadalajara, Jalisco, Mexico. He is, uh, has a record of 23-2-3. He made his uh, U.S. debut uh, down in San Antonio uh, last December on the Broner Maidana card, where he uh, 
uh, beat uh, Rod Salka. He is very excited to be back here, uh, to be fighting here in the fight capital of the world on the card, which is headlined by his younger brother Canelo. And uh, he was first scheduled to fight Omar Figueroa for the world title. We believe that Ricardo Alvarez is ready to fight for the world title, but he has to do a little detour here because Omar Figueroa injured his hands and had to pull off the card. But I think with uh, Sergio Thompson, Yeo Thompson, um, he uh, is going to fight somebody who is uh, going to bring it all. And as Chris de Blasio, the head of PR from Showtime, told me, he said, Ooh, somebody with the name of uh, Yeo, you know, you have to be worried. I wouldn't want to fight him. And, uh, but Ricardo will, and it's a pleasure now for me to introduce to you Ricardo Alvarez. Buenas tardes a todos. Este, pues aquí nosotros ya estamos listos para, para, para la pelea. Como ya lo saben, pues se cayó la pelea con Omar Figueroa, pero estoy listo. Estoy listo para la pelea que viene. Good afternoon, everybody, and uh, happy to be here. And uh, I'm ready. I'm ready to fight. As you guys know, the fight fell out with Omar Figueroa, but I'm still here. I'm ready to fight. Y pues ya sabemos que en el boxeo estas cosas pasan y, y pues hay que, hay que seguir adelante. Este, ahora se cambió el rival, pero estoy contento de, de estar en, en la cartelera y sé que voy a dar una gran pelea y voy a levantar grandes emociones. We all know that these things happen in boxing. There's accidents, they happen. But uh, I'm very happy to be here. I'm very happy to be in this big stage, to be fighting here. And uh, I'm ready to go, I'm ready to fight. Muchas gracias a todos. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, so opening up the pay-per-view portion of the event, uh, I mentioned before uh, Omar Figueroa uh, was the fighter who fought Omar uh, last year in 2013, uh, fight of the year candidate. Um, some of you actually scored it as the fight of the year. It was an unbelievable fight. And that was uh, Nihito Arakawa against uh, Omar Figueroa. Uh, Arakawa with a record of 24-3-1 of uh, Mujashino, uh, Japan, um, is a 32-year-old all-action fighter. I mean, must see TV. I can't wait to see this guy. I mean, if, if I could see him every night, sign me up. He really is a, a very, very exciting fighter. Tremendous heart, gives it his all. Uh, came, uh, had to overcome two knockdowns in that fight fought to exhaustion and just really demonstrated what heart and the definition of modern day gladiator is and that is Nihito Arakawa. It is really an honor for me to ask him up to the podium now and say a few words. Please welcome Arakawa. え、まず I prepared myself very well for the fight, but unfortunately, uh, English-wise, I'm limited, so I would like to address, address you all through an interpreter. え、まず、え、去年から引き続いて、え、2度もこのほどの大きなチャンスをいただけて、え、ゴールデンボーイプロモーション、え、経験プロモーションには本当に、え、感謝の意を表したいと思います。uh, first of all, I would like to thank Golden Boy Promotions, uh, as starting last year, has, has given me these opportunities. え、自分自身はえ、この、え、今回 
I may not have the most experienced record on this card, but I can assure you that I will give my 100% to win the fight. Please look forward to day after tomorrow, and I look forward to having a great fight. Thank you. Yeah, we're all looking forward too. Um, the guy is fighting, talk about action fighters, uh, beautiful to watch, the style and everything, is a former two-time uh, world champion, WBC featherweight champion, WBA super featherweight world champion, with a record of 35-3. and three. Uh, He has uh, four consecutive victories, including three knockouts. Uh, he's ready to uh, re-enter here the biggest stage of the sport, part of being part of the pay-per-view. I think he's one of the most talented fighters. It's a pleasure now for me to introduce to you Jorge Linares. Primero que nada, buenas tardes a todos los medios, eh, a todas las personas que están aquí presentes. Y bueno, contento nuevamente. Ya mucha gente sabe de mí y sabe de mi boxeo y, y ahora pues. Agradecido por esta gran oportunidad que me acaba de dar Golden Boy, el Showtime, eh, mi manager aquí, Ito Honda. First of all, good afternoon, and uh, what can I say? I'm very happy to be here. Thank you to the media, all the fans that are here. Um, I'm very grateful for this opportunity once again, Golden, Golden Boy, Showtime, for this great opportunity, my manager. Ahora el compromiso aumenta, ya que es un rival bastante fuerte. Eh, Aracaba es bastante fuerte, siempre viene hacia adelante, ¿no? bastante agresivo y el compromiso ahora se duplicó porque ahora vamos a pelear en primer view, así que la oportunidad eh, es más grande, así que estamos bastante preparados para esto, llevamos bastante tiempo preparándonos para una, una pelea grande y título mundial. This is going to be an important fight, it's going to be a very, very tough fight. Um, obviously, my opponent is a very, very tough fighter. The big stage, it's on pay-per-view, uh, so I'm ready for this, I'm ready for this. It's going to be a tough challenge, but that's what it's all about. Bueno, eh, los veo el sábado, gracias por, por todo, y con termina santo, como arigato. Mata, do you be esta noche, me gusta saber. He said, thank you very much. Thank you, see you Saturday night, and he can't wait to eat. Thank you. All right. Next up uh, is uh, IBF uh, World Championship at the 154-pound weight class between uh, world champion Carlos Molina and challenger uh, Chermal Charlo. Um, I want to make some comments related to that fight. Uh, obviously, we see that uh, Carlos Molina is not here. Uh, Chermal Charlo is. Uh, there are some issues which uh, Carlos Molina is facing uh, related to uh, some outstanding warrants. Uh, his legal team and his promoter, Leon uh, Margulies from Warriors Boxing, are currently working on trying to sort uh, these issues out and have them ready, hopefully, for the weigh-in and ultimately uh, for the fight. I know that Molina wants to fight, and I know he has a team behind him which is going to try to do whatever they can to uh, get him here um, in time to be on the card. In case, uh, uh, so just for the pay-per-view audience to know and for your readers to know as well, in case, and I do hope it's not going to come to that, uh, the fight does not happen, then um, uh, we would of course, uh, and that's the beauty when you have these deep cards, which I mentioned in the beginning, we have uh, the luxury of moving up uh, Ricardo Alvarez against uh, Yeo Thompson to the pay-per-view card. I have to tell you, from a pure entertainment point of view, uh, it probably would be an upgrade to the pay-per-view card. And I'm not saying that because of uh, Charlo, by the way, okay? So we're going to leave it at that. But, uh, of course, I hope that fight is going to happen. It's a much-anticipated fight. Um, Jamal Charlo of Houston, Texas, has been working hard on getting to this point. He is undefeated, 17 and 0, as exciting as they come, 13 knockouts. Uh, really uh, happy for him to have that title shot. And I think, uh, you know, what he goes through here, uh, so like waiting if his opponent is going to show up or not, obviously uh, is for a young fighter, a lot to deal with. 
but I talked to uh, Jamal, he is cool, calm, collected, he knows to stay focused, he knows to stay in shape, and uh, for all purpose sake this fight is on, until stated further, and Charlo knows that. He is, has a 20 year old uh, uh, twin brother as well, uh, and we're really proud to be able to promote uh, both of the Charlo brothers from Houston. I think both brothers have a ter terrific, terrific future. But for now, I do hope that Charmal Charlo is getting his dream fulfilled to be fighting for his first world title uh, on Saturday night here, part of the Canelo uh, card uh, from the MGM. Please welcome now Jamal Charlo. I'm 17 and old, I'm 23 years old right now, and fighting on this stage at the MGM Grand is like, you know, I feel like I belong in there with Canelo and all the other young fighters. Um, I also want to thank my team, Ronnie Shields, Danny Arnold, everyone who kept me, you know, calm and, and you know, not under pressure this whole camp. This was like, this was like the best camp here in Houston for me, you know, the whole city behind me. Everybody wants me to win the IBF, and um, with Carlos Molina not being here, it almost feels like, you know, I, I, like not that I feel short of my goal, but you know, I just I'm just waiting now, more anxious than than weighing in, and um, but <clears throat> all this said, you know, camp was great. I'm focused. Um, I'm I'm already on weight. I've been on weight for for like a month now due to my team, Danny Arnold and everybody at Plex. So regardless, you know, I'm going to continue to fight. I'm going to continue to train hard. I'm going to continue to be the, the twin brother to, to my brother, and we're going to rise to the top regardless. Y'all will see me soon. Thank you uh, very much. Um, next up, uh, I mean, I know it keeps on going. I mean, it's just amazing, all these great fights. And I said before that this one might be stealing the night, but I have to correct myself. I think that fight now actually might steal the night. And that is Leo Santa Cruz against uh, uh, Christian Mijares. Um, talking about Warriors toe-to-toe -to -toe action, I mean, it doesn't get better than that. Leo Santa Cruz, I think, is many fight fans' favorite fighter, and uh, Christian Mark but Mijares, with a record of 48 and 7, is always ready. He's a former three-time world champion, so he knows how to win, he knows how to perform at the highest stage, and he wants that world title again. He is 32 years old, uh, he's 14 and 1 in his last 15 fights. Uh, his only defeat came on a 12-round split decision against Victor Terrazas. He's been waiting for the moment to challenge for the world title again. It is a pleasure now for me to introduce to you Christian Mijares. ¿Qué tal? Buenas tardes. Pues ya no hay mucho que decir. Good afternoon. Uh, wow, there's not too much to say. Ya se llegó el tiempo, se llegó la hora. Eh, ya lo pronosticamos Leo y yo que vamos a dar una guerra, así es que este sábado primeramente Dios vengo a mostrarme y quiero ser campeón del mundo y vengo a lograrlo primero Dios ante una guerra, ante un gran campeón como Leo Santa Cruz. Uh, what can I say? The time is upon us, and uh, like Leo and I have been saying, we've been telling you guys, promise you guys, it's going to be a war, and that's what it's going to be. It's going to be a war on Saturday night. It's going to be a good fight. Ya no hay nada más que decir. Solamente esperar la hora. Primero mañana el pesaje. ¿Cómo andas en el peso, bro? Bien, bien. Bien, compadre. Perfecto. Muy bien. Y esperar la hora nada más del combate. No, ya estamos listos. Muchas gracias a todos. Well, it's time. It's time. Just waiting for the weigh in. Uh, Leo, are you on weight? Good. Okay. Good. We're ready for the weight, and uh, you know, ready to fight. Thank you. Too. So, <laughs> talking about uh, Leo Santacruz, man, this guy is just like amazing. Biggest volume puncher in the sport, uh, always exciting, always comes to fight. And as I have said so many times, and I never get tired about it, just really one of the nicest guys outside of the ring as well. Polite, kind, caring, uh, just an amazing, amazing, amazing person. And it is really an, an honor for me to be able to work for Leo Santa Cruz. I think he has a bright future ahead of him. Uh, many more challenges are awaiting him, but he knows that this Saturday night he is in a real fight. 
maybe the toughest fight of his career. He's well prepared, and it's a pleasure for me now to introduce to you Leo Teremoto Santa Cruz. Bueno, muy buenas tardes a todos. Good afternoon to everybody. Uh, I'm not that good at talking as you guys all know. Uh, I don't really talk that much or stuff, but I just want to take this time to thank all the people that has, has, has helped me and got me to this place right now, like, at, to be at this level. Uh, first, I want to thank all the fans. I want to thank all the media, the reporters, uh, all the writers that helped me. I want to thank my, my family, my, my dad, my mom, my brothers, my sister, and my girlfriend because uh, they've always been there for me, helping me since I was a nobody. And I want to thank Showtime and Stefan Espinosa, uh, Golden Boy, the whole Golden Boy team, uh, whole all Hamming team, and my, my whole team that has been helping me there run, and when I go running, and everybody. And I, I know I'm forgetting a lot of people, but I right now I'm just nervous, and then I, I can't think so <laughs> but, uh, but I, I say the... The last for, I mean, the, the best for last, I want to thank my manager, Al Heyman. Uh, he's not only there for me as a manager, but he's always been there for me like a family. Uh, he has helped me in everything I needed. There's no day that he, does, that he tells me no. The only time he tells me no is when I want to pay something back or something, he tells me no, uh, you can't pay me right now until I tell you when. And that's not me. But for anything else, I ask him for tickets, anything. He always told me yes. So I was very happy with him. And I think I was thinking about, I had never heard that there was been a word for manager of the year or, or manager of all time. So if, if I was doing that, I'll give him an award for being the best manager that there, there is. Because uh, he doesn't, I think he doesn't help all his fighters. Uh, as, as, a man, as a business, he helps them as a family, and I just, he's helped me so much that I have no other way that to thank him. That if the the one that gives a fighter of the year or uh, fighter of the year or trainer of the year, uh, they should give him a a word for manager of all time or manager of the year too. So he going to say that. And thank you very much. And about the fight. Uh, I want to <laughs> uh, say that I'm ready, I'm really excited to be in this undercard because it's my first, my first day review and to be at the coming event, I'm just very happy and excited. Uh, but I will to other people that I have named, uh, I saw thanks to them, they're the ones that got me to this place. Uh, I just come 100% ready because I know Mijares, he's a great fighter. I saw him fighting as I was growing up and I was getting my career started. So I know this is going to be the hardest fight of my, of my career, but that's why we train really hard to, to give a great fight to all the fans and to just make the fight out of the night like they're saying. But it's going to be really hard because Canelo and Pedro, they're really great fighters, so I think I'm going to have to work we're gonna have to work really hard to, to beat them because to beat them is gonna be really hard, but we're gonna try our best and we're gonna give all our fans a great fight. Thank you. Very well said and uh, actually, uh, Leo, I definitely wanna echo your, your, your comments. I don't think he gets enough recognition. Outside of the ring, in the ring, uh, all the fighters always thank him and that is Al Heyman. Uh, in my professional life as a banker first, He's a promoter now, he's a family man, he's a friend. I have never met anybody in my life who is like Al Heyman, and I want to thank him as well for everything he does for all the fighters and for the sport of boxing. Now, there is such thing as, a, as, a, as an award for the manager of, of the year, which is a very recognized uh, award by the Boxing Writers Association of America, which is voted by all these people here, so I don't think you need to convince them too hard because they did vote Al Heyman as the manager of the year and uh, I do believe that the convention or the awards dinner is going to be the week of the Mayweather fight uh, here in, in Las Vegas at the MGM, so um, I think you should actually present the award to Al <laughs> 
but that is not up to me. So uh, anyway, uh, let's go uh, move on now uh, to what we came for, which is really uh, the culmination of a great night of boxing, toe-to-toe -to -toe action, and that is Alfredo Angulo and uh, Canelo Alvarez. Uh, I don't need to uh, really tell you the accomplishment of either one of those guys because these are two of the most recognized names in the sport of boxing today. But what I noticed, what is interesting, when I arrived here, uh, you know, when I last week made some calls and you know asked around, pretty much everybody picked Canelo to win this fight. It was pretty much a landslide. And what I've noticed in the last like 24 hours, um, there seems to be a shift going on. More and more fighters, trainers, and media members are starting to say, you know what, I'm changing my opinion. I think Angulo is going to knock Canelo out. And I think it is this kind of sentiments uh, which shows you what we want to do is we want to put together great fights. Of course, each one of those guys wants to win. They're very determined. They want to win for themselves. They know how important the win is. They want to win for their fans. And I'm sure they want to win for Mexico as well. So both of those guys don't need any additional motivation. Both knows, both of those guys know that it is a very dangerous fight and they know how good their respective opponents are. When you look at uh, Angulo, uh, I like to uh, acknowledge and introduce some of uh, his team members. Uh, first of all, uh, Michael Miller, who is Alfredo Angulo's manager and uh, legal advisor as well, and uh, has been very instrumental in his career. He's a terrific guy. Please welcome Michael Miller. Can say a few words? Yeah, come on. Good to see everybody here, uh, all the trainers and all the great fighters here on this podium and uh, out in the audience there. It's going to be a remarkable night. I can sense that. Um, you know, I've had a couple of weeks to reflect on this event that's coming up. And, um, you know, I, I know the model has been toe to toe, uh, but I just have this feeling that uh, I don't think both men will walk out the ring the same. Saturday night. I, I just anticipate such a savage affair that it's going to be taken out of my hands. It's going to be taken out of Coach Reynolds' hands. And it's pretty much going to be left up to them. I'm kind of asking the officials and the judges just let them go. Because um, I can just sense this storm coming. Just let them go. If Alfredo gets knocked down, let him get back up and go. If Canelo gets knocked down, let him get back up and go. It's going to be taken out of our hands. This is going to be a savage, savage affair. And I've been anticipating this for the last couple of weeks. I can just feel it. So um, I really don't know what else to say. Uh, it's kind of bothering me. At the same time, I hope that I can rise to the occasion and that my fighter will walk out of that ring intact with many more future fights and also hoping that Team Canelo can do the same. But it's just something about this fight I really truly believe is going to exceed what we have probably never seen before. And uh, I'll just leave it at that. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Virgil. And I mentioned before with some of the fighters on the card, must see TV. And I think uh, Alfredo Angulo definitely fits in that category, must see TV. Never involved in a boring fight, always exciting, always comes to give it his all. His fight against James Kirkland was one of the fight of the year candidates. Um, uh, and uh, all of his fights are just always, you, you want to be there, you want to see it and you want to cheer him on. Uh, in his last fight against uh, Lara, uh, he um, People didn't give him much of a chance, uh, and you saw what he did with Lara, he not only dropped him, he uh, neutralized Lara's boxing skills, uh, was ahead on, this cars, on the cards uh, when the fight was stopped due to the eye injury. So uh, just an amazing, amazing fighter. He's been waiting for this opportunity, 
I know he trained hard, I know he's ready and he really, really wants it. It's a pleasure for me now to introduce to you El Perro Angulo. Hi everybody. First of all, I speak in my language. <laughs> in next, he will try to speak in English, okay? <clears throat> Muchas gracias a todos los medios por estar aquí presente. Le doy las gracias a todos. Desde, muchas gracias a, a, a Steven Espinosa, a Showtime, por esta oportunidad tan grande. Y a NGM. Y a Richard Schaefer, a Oscar, a Golden Boy. A toda la gente que hizo posible esta pelea. Muchísimas gracias por, por tener esa confianza de, de, de confiar y poner esa responsabilidad en, en mí. Y muchas gracias a toda la gente que trabaja para Golden Boy. No le puedo decir nombre a todos porque nunca voy a acabar. De este, lo único que les digo es que el perro no es muy bueno para hablar. Está listo. Ha hecho un gran trabajo para, para marzo 8. Y creo yo que Canelo Álvarez y yo le vamos a regalar un bonito espectáculo y yo los tengo mal impuestos a darles un gran show y yo creo que el 8 de marzo no va a ser la excepción. First of all, oh, thank you everybody for staying here. Thank you Showtime, Espinosa, MGM, Oscar de la Hoya, Schaefer, everybody thank you so much for for on and responsibility and, and, and me. And thank you so much, everybody working for Golden Boy. He's a lot of people. I don't remember all the names. But I really appreciate it. And I know that the dog, he doesn't speak too much. Uh, I'm working hard for this fight. He's ready for the March age. And I think so, Canelo Alvarez and, and Perro, he's ready for the March age. And he have a really good show for the fans. And he know everybody, the dog, he's a all the time when he put my name in all the cars, he said really good job. And Marche, I'm not thinking he's a deception. And thank you so much, everybody. Thank you, uh, Alfredo. Before I'm going to introduce uh, Canelo, I'd like to introduce uh, his team members uh, as well. Uh, he has been with uh, Chet Borain also uh, very, very since the beginning. Uh, and uh, really, Chepo has molded, I think, Canelo in many ways to the fighter he is today. He's done it to many other fighters before. Uh, he's a terrific uh, manager, uh, very good strategist as well. Uh, you know, he's a, he's a very clever guy and uh, knows exactly uh, what's going on and how to prepare his fighter. Um, any fighter who has uh, Chepo as, as his advisor, certainly, uh, has somebody who knows the ins and outs of the sport for a long time. It's a pleasure now for me to introduce to you Jose Chepo Reynoso. Buenas tardes. Good afternoon. <laughs> bueno, muchas gracias por su presencia a todos ustedes. Eh, en el campamento del Canelo estamos listos. Thank you all for your presence uh, in Canelo's camp. We're all ready. Ya en estos momentos, las palabras salen sobrando ya lo que se diga o lo que se dijo, lo que se va a decir. Hay que esperar para el sábado. Lo que sí les puedo asegurar que el mundo, el mundo va a ser testigo de un gran combate entre dos guerreros mexicanos, Canelo y el perro. At this moment, there's not really much more to say. Uh, words don't mean anything. Both guys are ready to go, ready to fight, but I will say this, that on Saturday night, the world's going to know, or they're going to witness a great war, a great battle between two great Mexican warriors, Canelo and El Perro Angulo. Thank you very much. We would like you to sing a song now, Chepo. Por favor. Um, Next to Chepo uh, is somebody well, who's been with Chepo all his life, his son, his son Eddie. And uh, Eddie gets him ready, uh, gets Canelo ready. He is uh, the man behind the man, the man with the plan. 
and uh, you know he says that he came up with the right plan so let me uh, introduce to you now the trainer for Canelo Alvarez uh, Eddie Reynoso Buenas tardes a todos los aquí presentes eh, pues como siempre hicimos 10 semanas de, de campamento Good afternoon, thank you all for being here uh, Like always we had 10 weeks of preparation for this fight eh, Siempre son difíciles las concentraciones se tiene uno que ir fuera de casa de la familia pero eh, lo hacemos con gusto porque es nuestro trabajo you know, it's always difficult to go to camp and get ready for a fight because you have to be away from the family, loved ones. But it's part of our job, and we love it because it's our job. Todo para dar este una una gran hacer una gran preparación y dar una buena pelea como todas las las peleas que hemos dado con Saúl. But it's all part of the plan. It's all it's all by design. You know, it's all to give a great fight, a great performance, like we always have with Saúl. Sabemos de de la peligrosidad de Alfredo. Yo lo conozco desde que estaba en en el Sedón. Un peleador, la verdad, muy fuerte, muy agresivo, que podrá ir perdiendo toda la pelea, pero con un solo golpe eh, puede, puede cambiar la, la, inclinar la balanza a su favor. I'm well aware of Perro Angulo. I've known him for such a long time. I know that he's dangerous. Uh, you know, he's the kind of fighter that with one punch, he can change everything. Hicimos todo, como les digo, a conciencia, y estamos listos para lo que traiga el perro. Si se quiere parar, nos vamos a parar. Si... Si sale a lo que sale, nosotros traemos condición para 15 rounds y nosotros también tenemos pegada y les aseguramos que ese día más que nada va a ser una guerra entre dos mexicanos muy fuertes que dan todo arriba del ring y esperamos salir con la mano en alto. With that said, uh, we kept that in mind in our preparation for this fight. We're ready for him. We're ready to stand and fight and bang if he wants to or we can box, whatever he wants to do, we're ready for it. You know, Canelo also has a punch, and he can also end things with one punch. And we're ready, and I think that on Saturday we're going to give everybody a, a great victory. Eh, pues es todo. Muchísimas gracias por su apoyo a Golden Boy, a Oscar, que siempre está al pendiente de nosotros, de, a Richard, a todo el equipo de Golden Boy, a la gente que nos ayuda también con Canelo Promotions. Y pues nada más que Dios los bendiga a todos los que están en las, en, incluidos en, en las peleas, eh, que cuiden al perro, que cuide a Canelo, a todos los que están incluidos en la cartelera y, y pues que gane el, el mejor. Gracias. And thank you, that's pretty much it. Thank you all again, once of all. And I want to thank Golden Boy, Oscar, Richard, everybody involved, uh, uh, Team Canelo, Canelo Promotions for all their work. And uh, may God hold both fighters and, and, uh, and, and there is, you know, keep them safe. Sorry, thanks. Thank you, uh, uh, Eddie, and thank you. Uh, Eric as well for the translation. Now when you talk about Canelo Alvarez, I've been here uh, during this week and you saw the huge turnout at the arrival, you saw the huge turnout yesterday at the media workout, we're going to have a sold out uh, MGM Grand Garden. There's a lot of great fighters. There's a lot of fighters in the ring who are as good as Canelo is, uh, who know how to box, who know how to bang, who are exciting. Uh, but yet, there are very, very, very few who have that extra something. And is it the red hair? I don't know. Um, I don't think so. Uh, it certainly helps. Uh, but I think it is his charisma and how he connects to the people, how he talks to people, how they look out for him, how somehow people are drawn to him. And I felt that that's when he walks out of the ring, uh, walks into the ring uh, with his robe on and so on, you know, it sort of gives you the chills. And the only other time I had that same feeling was when Oscar was walking out. And I think the way Oscar has connected to people is the way Canelo has connected to people. And of course, the fact that he can back it up in the ring, um, and as Eddie just said, he has, a, he has the knockout power. He can, he can box and so on. He has, and he's only 23 years young. So I think uh, when I introduce to you uh, Canelo, Saul Canelo Alvarez, with a record of 42, 30 knockouts from Guadalajara, Jalisco, Mexico, I'm not introducing to you just a fighter. I'm introducing to you in many ways the hope of the Mexican, of the Latinos, and many other nations in, in yes, 
I can raise, I can rise, I can rise above, and I can deliver, and I can excite. And he is, I think, for many years to come, going to be the face of boxing. It's a pleasure and an honor for me to introduce to you now, Saul El Canelo Alvarez. Agradecerles a todos, yo creo que ya hablar está de más, ya tuve la oportunidad de estar con ustedes antier, ayer, todos los días, ya no hay mucho que decir, solamente agradecerles todo el apoyo a toda la gente que hace posible esto. Well, thank you, thank you all for being here, uh, I think I've said enough, uh, I've been with a lot of you, a lot of the media people here, uh, two days ago, yesterday, today, I've talked, I've done many interviews, there's not too many word, more words to say, I'm ready to go. Agradecido con todos ustedes, con toda la gente y, y pues reiterar, ¿no? las peleas son de estilos y creo que el estilo del perro Angulo y mi estilo es para dar una guerra y estamos listos para eso. And uh, again, just I'm very thankful for all of you, for all the support and uh, I've always said this, boxing is about styles and I think that with his style, my style, it's going to be a war, we're going to give you guys a war. Yo soy de los que digo que siempre las palabras salen sobrando y hay que esperar al 8 de marzo y, y que gane el mejor. Muchas gracias a todos. And I've been the type of person that says, you know, talk is cheap. Uh, so, you know, we'll see what's going to happen on, on Saturday night. So, thank you very much for being here and we're ready to go. See you then. Thank you. Uh, thank you all. Thank you all the participants up here.